Good afternoon, Kabibal, and welcome to our high school educational webinar series. For the discussion today, the topic will be on action research made easy for school administrators and teachers of junior high school. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. First, you have to make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.bibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Place your questions on the comment box allotted during the session and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Share the video using hashtag LearnAsOnePH as our official hashtag to our Bibal webinars. Experience learning, Kabibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker. Our speaker is a graduate of Bachelor of Arts, major in philosophy at the Immaculate Conception, major seminary, in he took the continuing professional teacher education at the Lands, and now a licensed professional teacher. He is also a graduate of Diploma in Teaching Educational Leadership and a Master of Arts in Education, major in Educational Management, Summa Cum Laude, and Research Distinction Awardee. He is currently taking Doctor of Philosophy with Specialization in Management of Academic Programs currently in 54 units. In the year 2019, he was awarded as an Outstanding Researcher of the Year by institution to the national and international. Um, I start always with a prayer. Can we? Uh, can, can you please join me with a simple prayer? Okay. So in silence of our hearts, let us ask the Lord for His guidance and for His blessings. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Father, we thank you for this day. We praise and bless you for all the blessings that we have received each day. Please forgive all our sinfulness, our mistakes in life, and please guide us as we begin this webinar session. We also pray as, uh, in this special moment, we are praying for the frontliners. Um, give, give them courage and um, bravery in order to survive. Um, we also pray for one another, especially for teachers who are busy preparing for the opening of class for the class of 2020-2021. We are here and surrendering all ourselves for you. And uh, please send, for, send forth your Holy Spirit to enlighten our hearts and our minds that we may be able to learn what we need to learn. In Jesus' name, amen. The Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So good afternoon once again. Kamusta po kayo? Kamusta po kayo sa Pilipinas? Nasa Pilipinas din naman po ako. Ayla, ako po ay nasa Mars. No? Yung iba po, karamihan po sa ating mga teachers ay nasa Mars. Lumipat na ng Mars. Pero yun nga, uh, kidding aside, mahal natin ng Pilipinas. And um, wag po natin kalimutan, bago, bago tayo mag-start, actually sa simula po talaga siya ginagawa, to like and share our Facebook page, The Vival Group, and this YouTube Live. Now, do not forget to subscribe and use the hashtag LearnAsOnePH. Yan. Uh, ginagawa po natin ito para sa bata, para sa bayan. Ay, biro lang po. Pa, pang, pang, isa, pang dun po yata yun sa isang bival. No? LearnAsOnePH. Okay, para sa learner na lang ang gawin po natin. Para sa learner, para sa Philippines. Ayan. Okay. So, the topic which I would like to share with you is an action research made easier. Um, especially for the junior high school teachers. Yeah. Action research can be across all the department, actually, elementary or even in the senior high school. Um, let me uh, first unlock some ideas that are important. No? Palagi po natin itong ginagamit, but um, we fail to understand. Ano po ba talagang ibig sabihin itong mga... Uh, terms po na ito. When we talk about new normal in education, it means we adapt with an A. No, we adapt. But just like in research, di po ba, we adapt questionnaire if we use a standardized questionnaire. Ganun din po sa new normal, when we use new normal, new normal in education, it means we, we want to adapt a standard 
Now, we want to adopt a new standard, a new normal in education. So when we use, uh, when you say new normal in education, it means that you are adopting a practice, a standard practice or a standard uh, uh, way of living siguro ng mga, mga bata, ng mga teachers, even abroad. Number two is the new normal for education. Yan, magkaiba po yun eh. When we talk about new normal for education or there are available practices na ginagawa na before, pero we want to adapt it based from our capability, lalo na po sa Pilipinas, no? alam po natin yan. Although ito po ay ginagawa na sa ibang bansa, still, um, late tayong naka-adapt, not because hindi natin kaya, but because ito, uh, base sa ating kultura, base sa ating kakayahan, um, late, late bloomers kasi tayo. And we adapt, no? when we talk about adopt as as in o no um we borrow idea but we context totally adapting it with an a no para po sa ating education kaya po siya tinawag na new normal for three is all about the new normal of education so it it's it depicts the question adapt no parang parehas yung pronunciation ko no kaya na pong bahala new normal education it means that we already adopt and adapt or adapt yan and or adapt it means that we substantiate already something that is a standard or uh, a practice that we want to adopt. Ayan. So if you say new normal education, want to adopt or adopt a specific practice and, be, and use it as your standard in education. So currently, ang ating pong status, nasaan po ba tayo dito? Are we on the process of adapting with an A? or on the process of adapting or po natin ngayon, it's not actually a new normal uh, kasi in the fourth industrial revolution we have four actually the first second and the third na ito po yun nandito na tayo sa fourth industrial revolution it's just about adapting what we are supposed to adapt uh, dati pa lang no during the first in, uh, industrial revolution po kasi it uh, it's all about the steam meaning pagpapagana or uh, mechanism Di po ba dati, no? uh, there must be, the especially the Department of Education, has already been committed itself for access for education. Yan. Sabi po, mas challenging din po ito actually sa larangan ng edukasyon kasi uh, hindi lang ngayon yung mga walang kakayahan. Kung hindi yung mga may kakayahan na mag face-to-face, -face, pero hindi naman kayang mag-online learning. So, mas challenging talaga siya. The pandemic has greatly highlighted the digital divide between the hubs and the have not no mga meron tsaka wala which we have been experiencing even before this unfortunate episode of our lives the new normal should advocate for equitable access to online learning if a school chooses to go to go online then the school leaders must have a way to ensure that no student is left behind and barred from learning because of a preference to one mode of learning kaya nga po di po ba dapat napakahalaga sa atin yung pagiging flexible uh, there is no a single platform that can fit all offline. Uh, may mga nanonood po siguro dito mga school leaders, uh, school administrators. No, um, This must be a challenge for us in crafting our learning continu continuity plan for the coping mechanism natin. Eh. Let us treat this uh, idea that we are doing this because we want to cope up with the situation. Ere, dapat po ay meron pa rin tayo giving empathy to our students while not compromising the quality of education. Yan. And number four, better funding, stronger support, and more relevant professional development for teachers need to be prioritized. Alam po ninyo, ako po, ano, ngayon pong bakasyon, valued and dedicated teachers can help develop a generation of better and responsible citizens who can greatly contribute to the development of the society and humanity. Kaya po talagang napakahalaga ng role po natin sa mga teacher. Uh, nanay ka na, teacher ka pa. Ang problema po natin ngayon, alam po ninyo, the difference or the dis the distinction between working at home and being at home. Di po ba? Yung nasa bahay ka pero teacher ka din at the same time. Paano ka magtuturo tapos nagugutom yung mga anak mo kailangan mo magturo? Iba talaga before, iba talaga ngayon. The distinction between being at home and working at home. And number five is about sound pedagogy 
uh, drives the use of online tools and resources. Schools should ensure that teachers do not simply transfer or translate what they do inside the classroom into their online classroom. Sabi ko nga eh, eh hindi dapat kung ano ginagawa ni teachers sa classroom, ganun din yung gagawin sa online. Kailangan medyo mas light. No? There are certain dynamics that work well in, in the face-to-face -face instruction but do not in online learning. Teachers should avoid being a content dumper but instead a master of curator of resources that enable engaging and deeper learning. Sabi nga sa isang webinar na inatendan ko, dapat sa online class po natin, we are one step backward and two, and two steps forward. Meaning to say, light siya, pero the double yung effort natin in terms of delivering our students and, make, and making them feel that they really understand the instruction. Di po ba? Yan. Sige, review purpose of assessments and grade in times of emergency. Nasabi na po natin ito kanina that the educators agree that grade should reflect what the students have learned and can do. However, no, uh, this can be this can cause frustration and anxiety for them and teachers can help the students achieve this criteria by constantly giving them feedback. Ito po yung magagawa naman natin. No, kahit uh, mahirap mag-assess, mahirap mag-grade mag ngayon, uh, continuous pa rin po sana yung a constant feedback from them and for, from you as teacher. Yan po yung mahalaga talaga. Di, uh, actually, na, grades are just numbers, pero when we talk about the real essence of deliver of instruction, it's all about the transfer of information, the transfer of knowledge. Kaya po dapat talaga may feedback. And number seven, forge stronger school, community, and external partnerships. Alam po ninyo, ano, napakaganda rin po nung nangyari. If we, we're going to be optimistic for in this, in this situation, uh, mas, naging, uh, mas magiging strong ito, strong opportunity for uh, the school and the external, external uh, stakeholders po natin para magkaroon tayo ng mas malalim na communication, especially the parents. Di po ba? Yung ibang school po, may mga orientation na sila with the parents or guardians for their online learning uh, for the opening of the school year. Yan. Kaya magkakaroon tayo ng mas matinding ugnayan with the parents. And number eight, privacy, safety, and security, and digital well-being are top priorities. So, yan po, mahalaga din po ito sa atin. No? The, the, since online learning requires students to be on, on the internet for a period of time, these long exposures had become opportunities for digi digital threats. Ito po ang mahirap, ano? uh, such as cyberbullying and Zoom bombing to happen. So, yan po, kailangan po talaga maging... Uh, well, reminded din tayo. Ganon din ang mga bata. Kasi um, yung, yung word na think before you click, napakalaga po niyan. Kailangan meron pa ding ethics kahit po tayo ay nasa online learning. Uh, naalala ko po, nag ko ng PhD. We have management of uh, information system. Uh, napakahalaga po doon yung tinatawag na being ethical in terms of using the ICT. Yan. Um, kailangan din po natin silang paalalahanan palagi no, sabi nga nung isang na-attend ako din na webinar, sabi niya, uh, Sir, paano po namin uh, ma-assure, no, somewhat related dito, paano po namin ma-assure na talagang sineseryoso po ng mga bata yung pagsagot ng module, yung pagsagot-sagot sa online learning, ganyan. Sabi ko nga, uh, nasa bata talaga kung paano niya siseryosohin yung kanyang pag-aaral, kung lolokohan niya ito ay nasa kanya po yun, decision niya yun. Pero uh, what we can do here is to remind them about values, about virtues, about the Im most important things in life. So hindi natin to pinapalampas lang. Ito po ay talagang sineseryoso natin at talagang uh, kahit pa paano ginagawa natin part na ng buhay po natin. Di po ba? Number nine, last one. The flexibility and adaptability and empathy are essential skills in navigating uncertain times. Paulit-ulit po natin sinasabi. Uh, dito po sa pangalawang paragraph, teaching them to empathize with other people and challenging them to help the other members of the society can make the new normal more bearable, especially for those who are in the margin of the society. Paka-flexible po dapat, adaptability and empathy. Tatlong word na mahalaga nating matututunan from Francis Toscano. Yan, flexibility, adaptability, and empathy. 
last one, yung pang, pang sampo, para kung makapansin nyo, no, parang bitin, ibig sabihin po yung pang sampo sa atin na yun. No? Uh, you know, in philosophy, for Pythagoras, number 10 is the perfect number. So if you want to have a perfect reflection, no, uh, let's have it, ano, pang 10 tayo. Tayo na pong bahalang mag-reflect kung ano po ba yung ng, talagang karanasan po natin. And maybe we can share it with other people. Yan. Let me now proceed with the second uh, outline for the second pinar session for this afternoon. The elements of an action research with the aforementioned situation that we have. Uh, paano nga po? Sumabay pa eka itong action research. Gumagawa na nga kaming module. Pero alam po ninyo, napakahalaga din naman po. Ako. Kasi di po ba, kahit with or without pandemic, action research nandyan siya palagi to give solution to the existing problem. As the term implies, it's a research in action to give solution to the existing problem, be it school-based, regional-based, division-based, or kahit ano pa man. As teachers, kasi kailangan natin maging optimistic. Therefore, an action researcher is an, op- an, an optimistic teacher. Ayan. Um, usapan po natin, pag-usapan po natin una, yung preliminaries, the title page, o yung sinasabi nila na title page. Pero hindi lang siya title page eh. It also consists of acknowledgement, the abstract, table of content, list of tables, list of figures, and list of appendices. Ayan. Ito po yung itsura na magiging title page. No? Um, ang format po natin, nakasenter yung title, no space, times two romance, and a research submitted to the SGOD Planning and Research Section, Schools Division of, by, and your name, your designation, the school, and the school address. And the month and year, no, February 2020 or August 2020. It, that's the title page. The next one would be the acknowledgement. Yeah, mahalaga din po ito. One page lang would enough. Uh, this endeavor is indeed impossible without the person who stood with me throughout. Ah, sorry, thesis po pala nailagay ko dito. To you, my gratitude is eternal for the students, no, yung ginamit natin na respondents, teachers, school principal, language editors, research mentors, family, and of course, wag pong mawawala, magpasalamat tayo sa Diyos for the success of the, uh, of the action research. Yung ito rin po sa pinakamahalaga yung abstract. And the abstract is composed of the aim, methodology, findings, and conclusion. You know, some, uh, some division, no, may makikita po natin dito. Pwede kayong isang straight lang po siya, isang paragraph lang po siya, uh, that's composed of the aim, methodology, findings, and conclusion. Yun po yung itsura ng abstract po natin. The table of contents, yan din po siya, yan. Imrad siya actually, no? Introduction, methodology, result, and conclusion, references, appendices, and the curriculum vitae. And the list of tables, yan, mahalaga po yan. The list of figure, of course, the, uh, usually ito yung conceptual model natin or uh, kung mag, mag gusto nyo ng graph, pwede rin naman. Those are figures. Alam nyo pong pinakaiba ng tables and figures po. Ano? Tables, may column. Figures po ay more on drawings, diagram, bar, or graphs. Those are figures. List of appendices po natin, usually tatlo siya. The instrument that, that you used, the consent letters, and the declaration of anti-plagiarism and absence of conflict of interest. And this is uh, the body or the content or tama, the body of an action research, the introduction, methodology, result, and discussion. Under introduction, we have the review of lead, conceptual framework, research question, hypothesis, significance of the study, scope, and limitation, Yan. And for the methodology, we have type of research, respondents, sampling method, sources of data, instrument, data collection procedure. Number 13 is the ethical consideration, data analysis, timetable or the Gantt chart, cost estimate and the, plans for the, fla- the plan for dissemination and advocacy. So if you're going to make a proposal, ito po yan from intro to methodology, from uh, from intro to plan for dissemination and advocacy, then once approved, proceed po kayo sa result and discussion. How would the instruction go? Number one, it's a careful presentation of the importance and validity of the problem. And it is a systematic and orderly presentation of background information. And siyempre, introduction po siya. You have to orient your reader 
with educational trends related to problem, especially, sabi ko nga itong action is just about pandemic, the new normal education, yan, related to problem, unsolved issues, and social concerns. Um, I want, I would like to share with you uh, one of my style no, na natutunan ko din from my university, uh, the introduction, the, the, TIOC, the TIO approach. Hi, you're going to highlight the trends in the field. No? Uh, the, you're going to pinpoint issues underlying the trends. When we talk about trends, siyempre, study or literature that are published recently. Now, make sure lang po that the trends in your field should be recent. Yan, magkakot ka, magsasite ka. Um, tandaan po natin, ang action research in general, hindi siya pakapalan. Hindi rin po siya paiklian. Basta po substantial siya. That's, and that's it. An introduction can be a three-page or four-page only. Uh, pinpoint the issues underlying the trends. Ano po ba yung bawa? Ang trends natin ngayon ay pandemic. The online... Uh, the online education and beyond no and you're going to pinpoint the issues ano ba yung issues how sige teacher readiness na lang halimbawa no ay yung issue kung paano bang prepared ang teacher or sama na natin si student sama na natin si parents yan those are issues and you're going to state the overall objective or the intent of the paper in the light of the gap or problems identified the second style the second approach that i would like to share with you is Number one, the, the, tip, the tips approach, no? TIPS approach. They're going to highlight the trends once again. Pinpoint the issue. Describe the problem which has been identified. No? May pinakaiba po ba ang issues and problems? Meron. No? Ang, ang, issue, ang issue po natin, um, existing issue na uncertain no? kung masasagot or hindi. Once you're, you're able to identify it, once you're able to identify an issue with a solution, an immediate solution, that can be a problem. No, Problema na ngayon siya. Yung issue, problema na ngayon siya. Kapag kami nakita kang konting liwanag na pos posible siyang masagot, describe the problem which has been identified. Halimbawa, issue. Ang issue po natin ngayon ay ECQ without uh, without uh, ECQ without ayuda. Yan. Issue po yun. Problem natin ay ECQ, but we can have an online selling siguro, no? Pwede yan. State the best possible solution, letter S, which you would like to propose. The tips and the TIO approach. Okay, review of related lead and studies. Alam po ninyo, ako po as researcher, meron po akong isang format na ginagawa. Once I gather or collect literature and studies from the different databases that we have. We have EBSCO, we have Google Scholar, we have Research Gates, Scopus Index websites, at marami pa pong iba. Those are free. No? Kaya po, gone are the days, sabi nga natin, gone are the days na pupunta pa tayo sa mga library. So therefore, um, pag nakahanap ka, just read the abstract. Or if you have still uh, much time, basahin mo yung buong article. But I think the abstract is already enough. Numberan mo siya, gawa ka ng table. Um... Just like, just I would just like to share, no. Siguro sa amin po kasi 15 to 25 is enough for an action research. For masters 50, for PhD 100, no. For action research po kasi 15 to 20, pepedi na po siguro. Number mo sa 1 to 20. Uh, tignan mo yung year, 2015 and uh, 2015 onwards po tayo sana para talagang recent siya. Haanin natin yung luma kung meron namang bago, di po ba? And the title of the article or the journal, the journal publication and the findings. Mahikita po natin to sa abstract. Di pa ba kanina diniskas ko kanina no? Abstract is contained, uh, is consists of aim, methodology, uh, findings and the uh, conclusion. Yan. Page nyo lang po muna siya and then tsaka nyo po gawa ng thematic approach, thematic explanation of those findings. And the theoretical conceptual framework is a, a clear presentation of the theory which explains the study, why the study exists, and appropriate development of conceptual frame with the reference to the problems of the study. We have SEC approach. Number one, rule one, you're going to state the theory, explain the theory, and contextualize the theory. Meron po tayong uh, sentence stems na po pwedeng gamitin. This study is theoretically anchored on 
this paper is premised on. The theoretical basis of this paper is, no? Pwede naman po, hindi naman kailangan to theory lang basta we. Pwede naman po, a specific study. Alamawa, the theoretical basis of this paper is about Francisco Toscano. Francisco Toscano idea that the online learning should be flexible, adaptable, and emphatic. No? Yan. O pwede po yun. And... For an action research, this is the common conceptual conceptual framework that we are using. Pero hindi lang po ito, ha? Uh, this is called the true experimental research approach. Yan, wherein there are two groups, randomly selected, and we have pre-test, post-test. The first group, the experimental group, has the uh, the intervention, while the control group do not have. For example, Gallery Walk is an in, uh, innovative teaching strategy in teaching mathematics. And po, no, uh, completo, ra it's random, pre-test, intervention, and post-test. And it's, the pre-test and the post-test is bounded by time palagi. May expire po yun, eh. expire yung data o yung uh, raw data po natin na magagaling sa mga students pag hindi siya na, na monitor. Okay. Meron pa po tayong tinatawag na IPO approach. The input, process, output. Meron pa po tayong tinatawag na IVDV model. Pero sabi ko nga, ito yung most, com most common because an action re research is about giving solution to the existing problem. Then kailangan natin merong baseline palagi. So gagamitin natin itong naisip nating solution. No? Tapos palagi natin titignan ito, yung control. Paano kung wala ito? Would there be a significant difference or would, would there be no significant difference between the two groups? If there's a significant difference, we know for a fact that this, that your intervention, that your action is effective, di po ba? And if there's no significant difference with or without your action research, I hindi naman pala effective. So therefore, there might be other factors that can contribute to the uh, to the to our uh, based on yung ating dependent variable siguro. Tambawa, uh, academic performance, yan. So, let me now proceed to the research questions. Ito po yung usually, para hindi rin kayo maligaw, you can use it as, as your pattern to conduct or to formulate research question. Kailangan po kasi equal sila, no? And you can use their age. Number one, how, how do the members of the respondents be compared in terms of age? So, yan. Kasi baka mamaya, mas matanda, mas bata. That can affect the result of the study. Pag hindi sila naging random. And number two, what is the level of the respondent's prior knowledge about the subject? Yan. And what is the level of the pretest scores of the respondents from control and, and experimental group? Number four, what does the ex actual experimentation look like? So, paano, inanarate mo siya, paano mo siya ginawa? And number five would be the post-test. About the, the, about the post-test po ito. How are you going to compare your control and experimental? Later, pag-usapan po natin, yung usually na ginagamit sa, uh, sa stat, no, pagka po, uh, significant difference. It's about t-test. Yan. And lastly, the your contribution, no, what pedagogical implications may be drawn from the findings of the study to further improve teaching mathematics, for example. So, uh, you can have it, no? You can have it screenshot para po mak maka mapulot po kayo. I know that lots of, of teachers have already um, well informed about action research, but I think uh, this still can uh, can help everybody, especially in for those teachers that are seeking for uh, new knowledge or for seeking other opportunities other ideas in writing your action research. So, kung magagamit mo pa rin siya, kahit marami ka nang alam. And number four is about hypothesis of the study. Sa division namin, nilalagay namin to parehas, the null hypothesis at alternative. Pero sa badang huli, pipili ka lang kung alin dyan ang idadenay mo or i-accept mo. Yan. Ayan. Halimbawa, uh, isang sentence lang po siya, no? no significant difference exists between the scores of the respondents in the conduct of gallery of walk as an effective teaching strategy in mathematics. Yung alternative naman yung or yung H H1 tanggalin mo lang yung no kasi it's the positive no it's the positive statement of your hypothesis of the study 0. 0. 0.05 yun po yung margin of error um sige para po mas malalim yung pagkakaunawa ninyo bakit po ba 0. 0.05 uh, tandaan meron po kasing isa pa yung 0. 0.01 
bakit po 0.01? Pag po it's a matter of life, kailangan 99% sure o yung confidence level, especially in looking for vaccine siguro, 0.01 dapat yan. And for uh, siguro dito, na hindi naman siguro masyadong involved ang buhay ng tao o kaya naman ay yung harm sa tao, ay kaila, uh, siguro ay uh, pwede na yung 95% significant uh, 95% confidence level uh, or yung 0.05 margin of error of your study. And the significance of the study, yan, pwede pong umikot ito with your principal, the teachers and the students or your pupils, yan. Yung iba nilalagay pa nila uh, school policy makers, yung iba nilalagay pa nila sa bandang huli yung future researchers, pwede po kaya pang bahala. Pero to make it more easy, uh, can look for, since ito po ay school-based, ang unang-unang makikinabang po niya na school principal, teachers, and your students. The scope and limitation, okay? Ano po ba yung ilalagay po dyan? It's the, your general aim. Ulitin mo lang siya. How are you going to measure your variable? Ba ba? Uh, school leadership, uh, leadership style will be assessed in terms of Ano yung mga sub-variables na tsaka sino? Uh, this study will consist of several numbers of teachers in this school during the school year 2020-2021. So, dalawang, ano, dalawang lang siguro, dalawang paragraph or one paragraph can do sa scope and limitation po natin. How about the methodology? The second part, uh, Ito po yung, may konting intro po yun when we talk about methodology, sasabihin mo lang yung sa reader mo kung ano yung makikita nila dito. Nabawa, this section contains the type of research in yung uh, first section natin na makikita dyan. The respondent sampling method, sources of data, the instrument, the data collection procedure, the ethical consideration, the data analysis, the timetable or the gun chart, uh, the cost estimates and the plan for dissemination and advocacy. So, iisa-isahin mo na siya ngayon. Number one is the type of research. Yan. Usually, ito nga yun, pag-action research po ay true experimental pretest post design ang ginagamit po natin. Yan. It's a description whether an action or intervention that has been done is effective or not. Bibigyan mo siya ng justification why you are going to use such uh, design. No, Then, please, you're going to cite literature or uh, tama, literature po ito. And specifically, this study aim to know if gallery walk as teaching strategy is effective or not. Yan. And the respondents of the study, pwede, ito lang yun. Ito lang po yun. The, the respondents of the study consisted of, kubagawin, hindi naman natin talaga kailangan masyadong mabulaklak kung tutuusin. Because when we do action research, kung ano lang yung mahalaga, yun lang yung dapat makita. Ako ikaw yung reader, Mar gusto mo ba marami pang sinasabi yung uh, yung manunulat? Hindi po ba kung ano lang yung mahalaga? Yan, it, it consists of siguro 400 students for the school year 2020-2021. Uh, kung 400, 200 for experimental and another 200 for the control group. Some some uh, researcher would, uh, would uh, include uh, table. No? Table number one shows the distribution of respondents by school. Pwede kasi siya by grade level, pwede siya per department, yung population niya, tsaka yung sample. O later, magsasampling size, hindi ko sure kung nailagay ko dito, may mga tinatawag tayong different sampling size, no? Uh, sample, sampling method. The snowball, the uh, fishbowl, uh, using the Slobin's formula, and all. Ito po yung halimbawa ng sampling method na karaniwang ginagamit pag experimental. Fishbowl, bakit? Kasi... Um, bubunot ko be. Eh. Yung iba kasi systematic sila. Nililista nila yung total population. And then, uh, alam mo ba, every ninth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9. O siya. Tapos, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Tsaka yung pang 18. So, nakalimutan ko yung tawag dun eh. Pero, yan, ibig sabihin po nito, kailangan, there must be an equal opportunity for all your uh respondents. Kailangan may equal opportunity yung uh, yung respondents mo, possible uh, respondents mo to be your uh, respondent or to be your subject. Yeah. Meron din naman tinatawag na pair matching type. So, lilista mo lahat ng babae, lilista mo lahat ng lalaki, tapos magpe-pair and matching ka. Pair matching type. Yan. Uh, during the defense or the interview with your SEPs sa research, kukwento mo lang, justify mo lang siya 
paano ka nag-sampling. Mahalaga kasi yun para sa kanila. The sources of data. The data were coming from scores of the respondents from control group and the experimental group from junior high school students at ano yung school? During the school year 2019, 2020, or 2020, 2021. So, ganun lang. Bisabihin daw niyan, saan magagaling or anong panggagalingan ng data mo? Eh, sa respondents po ba? Yan. The instrument of the study, it can be a combination of two or it can be a uh, standardized instrument lang siya or it can also be a researcher made provided na kung gagamit ka ng researcher made instrument it should be validated no by an expert or by experts pag sinabi natin experts sa larangan ng edukasyon this must be a supervisor no for a specific area subject or master teacher yan pag sinabi natin expert no pag sinabi naman natin in terms of management, you can interview your uh, SGOD, your Human Resource Department, or your Administrative Officers, Assistants, no? Yan. Yeah. And when we talk about standardized instrument, we adapt with an A. No? Gagamitin mo talaga siya. Sa tingin mo, possible siya na magamit. Kahit ginamit abroad, pwede mo siyang gamitin ngayon. Yan. Yeah. So ito yung sample ng kung paano mo ikukuwento, yung detalye po niyan, yung detalye po ng instrument na gagawin mo, na gagamitin mo, I mean. In the data collection procedure, pwede tatlo yung step-by-step -step process. Number one, a letter was sent to the school's division superintendent, the, the district supervisor, mahalaga po kasi yan, and the school principal, to ask permission. Part ito ng ethical consideration mo as researcher. And number two, uh, once approved, Meron ka na, the researcher then distributed the questionnaire to the respondents personally. And lastly, the researcher will collect the questionnaires from the respondents and check whether all questions are answered. So ganun siya. Pag po tapos na, past tense, pag gagawin pa lang, proposal pa lang, future tense. Yan. Is everything clear so far? Okay. Ethical consideration. Yan. Pwede, pwede din po nyo itong actually... Uh, kunin or i-modify. It's about the declaration of the ethical standard or ethical consideration for your research. Sasabihin lang man, naman natin dito, this research consider the ethical standards set by the generic research ethics. In so doing, the participants were informed. Okay, lang, mahalaga kasi yung consent. No? About all the steps that will be taken in this research, the participants were more important than the study and therefore always respected. They were informed that the study is completely voluntary and would not affect their lives as students and as persons, even their families in any way. Confidentiality was provided as the participants' identifying information was not sought. The data collection material kept and destroyed on the completion of the study as in accordance with the Data Privacy Act of 2012. Yan, yan po yung ethical consideration pag sinabi. How about the data analysis? Dito ang pinag-uusapan, ano yung gagawin mo? Magmamano-mano ka ba ng pagtutuos, ng pagkocompute or gagamit ka ng isang software? At kung gagamit ka ng software, ano yung formula na gagamitin mo? Make sure lang po that your formula is aligned with the statement of the problem. No, yun, yun, ang, yun ang isa sa mahalagang partnership ng stat at ng research. May merong specific or most appropriate formula for a specific research problem. No, The data were tabulated and processed using SPSS. Alam ko iba na po ang ibig sabihin ng SPSS. Nakalimutan ko lang. And to determine the effectiveness of math gallery, math game or the gallery walk as an effective teaching learning strategy, the T-test formula was utilized. Kasi nga, di po ba significant difference yung gusto niyang malaman. At pag nalaman niyo yung significant, significant difference, doon niya malalaman if it is effective or not. Yan. Yun yung data analysis. Meron, pero bukod po doon, meron pa tayong tinatawag na frequency. Meron pa tayong tinatawag na mean. Mean mode, median. Yan. Timetable or the gun chart. Yan. Uh, for, this, for this month, ano yung gagawin mo? At sino yung involved? At ano yung output or the success indicator of that uh, for that uh, period of time? Mabawa, gumawa ka ng title for the month of August person involved, the researcher, and the mentor. Pwede siya hanggang, bawa, hanggang December. Teacher, uh, researcher, mentor, 
stat sa pwede mo siyang isama tsaka yung mentor, pwede rin. Yung SG uh, yung SEPs po ninyo, the uh, Education Program Specialist for Research, yan, pwede mo siyang isama. And your success indicator. Ano ba naka nakagawa ka ng approve uh, approve proposal yan. Yan po yung mga success indicator po natin. And ito po yung halimbawa ng cost estimates. Yan. Uh, ibig sabihin, magkano yung magagastos mo for your research. Bakit po? Kasi yung iba, uh, sinasabit po ito for region, eh, for, B, for BERF, the BERF, Basic Education Research Fund. Uh, gumagawa, ng, gumagawa po ng ganyan para at least, no, uh, if you want your paper to be funded by the Department of Education, at least meron silang basis or magkano ang aabutin. Depende po, de, uh, depende po yung sa scope, eh. No, Yeah, hindi po pa pwedeng umabot ng 100,000 'yan pagka school based lang. O daig pa M, daig pa MOE ano. Yan. Gagamit ka ng short band paper, ball pen, ink. Gagamit ka ng uh, pagka ay talaga nakalagay dito. Uh, photocopy syempre load, tsaka uh, place to be visited from station 2. Yan. So masaya ka and all. Pero syempre mas tipid nga daw po ngayon kung tutuusin kasi Uh, online transaction, kahit ang pagpapasa ng action research. Ewan ko lang po sa ibang division, pero ganun po. Tipid tayo sa pamasahe, tipid tayo sa ink, tipid tayo sa photocopy because even survey can be uh, translated in the form of Google Forms. Di po ba? Ano tayo ngayon? Paperless. And the last one, the plan for dissemination and advocacy. Pwede ka sabi mo dito, i-share mo siya through Slack session or Slack session. at ipapublish mo siya at ipapresent mo siya in the international fora no, or conferences. Uh, dito na tayo sa may, uh, third part, uh, third and fourth part of the IMRAD format of an action research, the result and discussion. Um, we use PI approach, PAI approach, pero mas maganda, gawin mo siyang ipay. You start with a simple introduction, remind mo yung reader mo, ano ba yung problem mo sa una, sa intro, no? Konting, ano lang, konting uh, intro about your discussion. And then you're going to present the data. Ito po yung alimbawa nung uh, presentation. Daka table siya actually. Yan. And analyze the data. It may be gleaned. Kung baga, when we talk about analysis of data, you're going to put into words the data that are being presented in your table. Sabi dito, it may be gleaned from the table to Ang table 1 mo ay respondents, table 2 ka mag-start pagdating sa result and discussion. The comparison between the level of pretest performances of the control and experimental group. Data analysis in the control group revealed a 19.85. Yan, ito po siya, your mean, 19.85 and over the total of 50 item tests, while the experimental group showed 20.25 mean score with the associated standard deviation of 6.770 and 6.483 respectively. Ano po yung ibig sabihin nito? Yeah, ano mo siya, i-interpret mo siya later. Pero may kaduktong pa pala siya. Ayan. The result of the TITAS analysis revealed a 1.577 computed T-value with associated P-value of 0.117 which is higher than the significance level of 0.05. Ito po yung sinasabi po dyan. When we talk about p-value, yan, 0.117. Sabi po dito, pag mas mataas ito kaysa sa alpha, the significance level, ibig sabihin nun, non-significant. No? Ibig sabihin, you can have a confidence now that your respondents in the control and experimental group uh, are equal in terms of having their, uh, in terms of their uh, pre-test scores. Yan. In terms of pre-test, para sila may, yung baseline nila common. Para pagka gumawa ka ng post-test later, malalaman mo din no, uh, kung magkakaroon po ba ng significant difference or not. Yan. So maganda na yung resulta mo dito ay non-significant. So ganun mo siya pag interpret the result of the TITAS analysis revealed a 1.577 computed T-value. Ito po yung T-value. Yan, tsaka po yung associated probability value po niya. Pag mas mataas ito kaysa dito, ang interpretation po, non-significant. Yan. So, this means that the level of the pretest scores of the respondents got the level 1 
proficiency or beginning rating, which means to say that students are struggling with their understanding due to lack of essential knowledge and skills in mathematics. Meron po tayong ano, part ito ng data analysis mo doon sa part ng methodology. Yung ito, yung different levels. Meron beginning, advanced, uh, proficient, yan. So meron din siyang verbal interpretation doon. Pwede mo siyang magamit dito. Tapos part nun, second paragraph, please integrate the related literature or studies here. That is part of interpretation of data because a good researcher can actually be able to integrate data. Uh, it can be able to integrate related literature or studies from your findings of the study. Yun yung nagpapaganda ng action research. Eh. Merong lalim pagka ikaw ay marunong mag-integrate. So therefore, kailangan mo, kailangan mo, talaga siyang mag, kailangan mo talagang magbasa. Di po ba? And... The references, nasabi ko na ito kanina. Relevant topics for the new normal in education. The last point. Yan. I, have, I only have three minutes, no? Please give me uh, uh, enough time. May 30 minutes pa tayo later for some question and answer portion. Um, relevant topics for the new normal in education. I think uh, magagamit nyo po ito. Sana po ay makatulong. Number one, uh, some schools would have simulation classes. Yan. Meron pong, bago mag-start actually ang klase nila by August 24, as part of their best practices ay yung pagkakonduct ng simulation classes. So you can have an action research about that. And also the SLM, no? SSLMs, the Self-Directed Supplementary Learning Materials, and modules po ito, and the comparative studies between the online and offline teaching and learning modalities, video lessons recorded or live, yung effectiveness niya. Ano pa ba mas effective? Live live video lesson or yung recorded? And you can have comparative studies actually. And social media, assessment of these platforms, if it is effective or not. Yan. Uh, we can use Facebook Messenger. Di po ba, no? TV and radio broadcasting. Yan. Sino po ba dito ang sumali sa search for teacher broadcaster? Yan. And the teacher's ICT competencies or proficiency. And you can also use your part of your dependent variable would be the, the teacher readiness for the new normal in education. So dito sa mga topics po na ito, pwede nating alamin kung talaga bang ready si teacher in terms of using ICT, in terms of using different online platforms, the different best practices na meron tayo, at yung readiness din ni bata, tsaka yung readiness din ni uh, ni parent. Yun, yun talaga yung underlying, underlying issues and problems po natin dito. Eh. Their readiness. Because we are all preparing for the opening of the school year. How about the other ones? The student's mental health. Yan, syempre, mawala na naman ng trabaho mga, mga magulang nila. ECQ kasi. The student's resiliency on cyber abuse. If you are a values ed teacher, you can use that as your dependent variable. Pero ano ba yung uh, specific strategy na po pwede nating i-input dito to improve their re resiliency in uh, cyber sex abuse? Yan. Uh, sabi po nila, no, yung, kasi yung, yung uh, problem ngayon, uh, yung mga, mga bata ay do not think before they click. So paalam, nag-online class, pero nag-online watching pala. No? Um, student socioeconomic status because this might be a factor, a big factor for their learning. Yan. So therefore, meron talaga dapat survey about this one. Survey on preferred learning modalities. Yan. Mahalaga din po ito kasi, lalo na, paano kung magkakonduct ng action research about online learning kung wala naman palang nag-enroll or wala naman palang may gusto ng online learning. Gusto pala ay puro modules. Yan. And uh, some students who are having uh, some entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship and online selling. Uh, ganun din sa teacher. Ano yung kinalaman nito sa possible na maging contribution nito in terms of their entrepreneurial skills? Nalagay yun sa mga TLE teachers. Creativity amidst COVID-19 COVID pandemic. Pag sinabi natin creativity, ano yung mga magagandang nagawa nila habang sila ay nasa pamilya nila? Lalo na sa teacher siguro. Uh, actually, ang action research po ay hindi naman quantitative lang. It can also be a qualitative using 
lived experiences, phenomenological phenomenological approaches, kwento, kwento ng karanasan ng mga tao. And from there, pwede tayo makabuo ng idea. Professionalism in the new normal education and what does it mean to be a new normal leader? Yan. So ano nga ba? Pwede yun, yung mga ganong bagay. Uh, tumatanggap po ng mga qualitative research ang, ang mga different division offices. Actually, madalang po ito. Pero maganda rin po kasi without qualitative researchers, there is no quantitative research. For my point of view, ha? Kasi all quantitative researches must be based from theories, must be based from ideas that are conducted using qualitative method. So, ganun yung kahalaga. Ganun yung kahalaga. Uh, meron pa din po dito, the sports activities, Zumba. Yan. Hindi ko lang kung paano, anong po pwede natin gawin dito. Paano ka magtuturo ng sports using online po? Ano? Bawa, basketball ang subject. Basketball ang subject, paano ka magtuturo ng online? No? School-based new normal best practices. I, I know that many other schools are, 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 are having best practices. Tingnan po natin kahit may best practices. Tingnan, i-assess pa rin po natin if it is effective or not. Uh, mga Filipina majors po dyan, makabagong kagitingan sa gitna ng pandemya. Maganda rin po ito. Yan. Actually, last time we had webinar with the Ayala Group of Company, um, pinag-usapan po namin ito about kagitingan. No? Yung, may mga, yung mga parents, siguro, yung mga estudyante siguro na may mga magulang na frontliner, uh, ano yung po pwede nilang ikwento sa atin? No? Paano, paano sila nabubuhay with them, with their parents? or with their relatives who are frontliners. Yeah, napakasarap pag-aralan po niyan. At DepEd Commons din po, isa sa mga innovations po ng DepEd. Aral Moon application, the Google Classroom, Facebook, nasabi ko na kanina, group chat and video call. Ito, title ito, no? COVID-19 and beyond, from forced remote teaching to learning and learning to the new normal in basic education. Yan. After pandemic, ano na tayo? Yan. Qualitative din po siya. And the training needs assessment. So more or less, iikot po siya sa training needs assessment ng mga bata, kwento ng mga bata, tsaka yung iba't ibang uh, best practices na meron po tayo. So I hope and pray that you have been enlightened using this content outline. Toscano's reflection on the new normal in education. Elements of an action research. Relevant topics for the new normal education. So, I hope and pray nakatulong po ito sa inyo. Uh, sana po ay um, makatulong din po kayo sa iba. Alam po ninyo, last time ano, nag-uusap po kami ni Miss Kia De Castro. Sabi po niya, uh, parang tanong ko po yata, no, why, 